They went out and adopted the kid. From the Montreal Expos, catcher Gary Carter. When the Mets acquired the All-Star from Montreal, they knew they were getting a special player. But no one expected his Shea debut to be quite so special. We come up in the 10th inning, Neil Allen was on the mound for the Cardinals, and he missed with a first pitch curveball. This could be the ball game, deep to left, out of here, Gary Carter, a game-winning home run in the bottom of the 10th inning, and the Mets win on opening day, 6-5. to five. I feel like that opening day basically endeared me to the fans for my entire five-year career there in New York, just by one swing of the bat. There are so many different memories of Gary Carter, and uh, as I'm sure many people here have mentioned, how he was that inspiration, he was that go-to guy, he was that clutch guy that, uh, you know, when everybody was down, he was that type of person who would just kind of, you know, get everybody's spirits back up. But. You know, ironically enough, probably one of the big moments I would imagine in his career was his first game, opening day, 1985. Um, not too many people know, but it was a tie game uh, all the way through, through the ninth, into the top of the tenth. And sure enough, Gary Carter gets up. Opening day, his first game as a man, and. What do you guess? He hits the game-winning home run, and Mets win that opening day in 85. So that was probably a big moment, I think, for a lot of Mets fans, but even for him as a player. Signature moment, opening Signature day. Signature moment, opening former day. Met, Neil Allen. There you go. <laughs> so that's the way, you know, that's just the way he was, and, and it really signifies the type of life he led. He was the leader, um, and just a, all of, all around great player. that my dad took me at Shea. Uh, it was like so beginning of June, I think. He had a home run in his first at bat and then a grand slam, I think, at the end of the game. And I was just a fan of the kid for life. It was probably the best uh, experience I ever had at Shea. There isn't one particular moment. It was just that he was... He was a good guy on a, a questionable team. I mean, they won, but he was definitely like the, the even keel on the team. And, uh, I think that's what I will remember. They're screaming at the top of her lungs, so I go out to the living room and I'm like, what happened? Gary Carter just got a base hit! <laughs> so I'm like, oh my god! So I sit down and I sit down with her and my dad and I just see the rest of the bottom of the tenth unfold. And it's my greatest sports memory. It's not only my greatest Carter memory, it's my greatest sports memory of all time. And I mean, my whole Mets fandom. Uh, I've met Gary Carter numerous times, always a nice guy. Um, met him a few times at uh, like baseball type uh, card shows, uh, autograph type things. Always taking pictures, very friendly with people. Um, met him a few times at Duck Stadium, a nice look, very nice guy out there. And um, he was just like the main reason I got into baseball. I grew up around him and got caught up a Mets fan. Was at, at the time, I was three years old in 86. I remember him. Him saying things like, don't want to give up with the, uh, don't want to be the last out of the World Series. Just want to hit that ball and everything else happened afterwards. It's a good memory. My favorite Gary Carter moment <clears throat> um, was actually off the field. Because, uh, <laughs> although my parents swear that I stayed up for the entire, you know, 86 series, I was on the floor at the time, so I never really got to see him play. But uh, a lot of the things that he's done, the interviews and everything, um, 
you could tell that he was a real, real respectable guy. He really loved the game. He really, you know, he was there. He was a team player. And uh, a lot of people are brought up, you know, his first game that he played. Um, not only did he have the game-winning home run, you know, his first game as a Met, this was after he was beamed by a pitch at his first at bat. You know, I mean, he was a tough guy. He always tough it out. And even with this, he fought to the very end. When Gary became a Met, I was pretty young, so I don't have like very strong memories besides what I've watched in replays. And you know, when when he came to the Mets, I was five. You know, '86 when they won, I was just about to turn six. So it's like I'm sure I watched the games with my parents. I don't really have memories of that. But uh, from what I've watched and learned about him in you know recent years, um, just his motivation on and off the field was so inspiring. Um, played the game 110 percent, and then. When it was time to, you know, party with those other guys, he always strayed away from that, and that's really something that's, uh, you know, something that's like to look up to. I mean, I'm not saying I'm, you know, a saint. I, I don't, I don't model my life after, you know, the way he has, but it's something to be respected. I was blessed with a gift, and I thank the Lord above for the wonderful, wonderful opportunity to have played this great game of baseball. 1992. The Lord gave me a storybook ending of my career in front of over 40,000 fans. My last at bat was a game winning double, and after hobbling to second base, I left the game to a standing ovation. There is nothing like the roar of the crowd. You see, I always have been a fan of the game first and a ball player second. Maybe that's why I had the love and passion for this great game so much. There's so, so many that I have not been able to mention. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. It is nice to know that even though my body feels like an old man now, I will always be a kid at heart. <laughs>